Now, before we go a lot further in this series and looking at a lot of the different uh, features and things like that, I wanted to quickly show everyone how to just turn on an instance. I mean, you've been watching this video series for like two hours. How do I just turn on a server, right? So I'm logged in with my root account. Not in, you need an admin account or essentially an account that has access to EC2. If you're logging in with your root account, awesome, you're going to have it. What you would do is you would come into the search field and you would type EC2. Or, again, you can click on the, uh, the all services link here and you can just find EC2 under compute. This is going to bring us into the EC2 console. This is where we're going to run all of our different images and we're going to make sure that they're in the right availability zone. Now before we turn on an instance, I want to give you kind of a quick recap to the architecture of AWS. Now we're going to talk a little bit more, I think, in depth about VPCs and things like that. What are they? How do you configure them? But I want to just quickly show you them. So I'm going to go to services. In fact, let me just be lazy here for a second. I'm going to type VPC in the search field and we're going to go to our VPC. When you first sign up for an AWS account, you're going to get a default virtual private cloud network. This VPC, if you come over here and you click on your VPCs, you're going to see here you have one. If you click on your VPCs, you're going to have the default VPC. It's going to have no name. They're going to, they're going to give you a slash 16 that essentially belongs to you. Now, you can create more. In fact, we'll probably create a few uh, throughout this video series. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. But um, you can create multiple VPCs all having different subnets. Now, you'll see here that they do give us a slash 16. Now, the recommendation is that when you create a VPC, you have a slash 16 and then you come under subnets and you can break these things down from there. So you can select multiple different subnets, you can have different functions, you can have a data subnet, you can have an app uh, subnet, you can have a management subnet, you can have whatever you want. Now I'm not going to go through all of these different features here within, um, within your VPC. Really your VPC and your subnets are kind of the main things you're going to want to know right out of the gate. So let's go back to our EC2. And let's just spin up an instance. I'm going to click on instances running. You can also click on launch instances from that other page. We have no instances running, so let's create one. We'll say launch instance. Now, this is where I can select multiple different instances if I want to. I can select some Mac instances. These are actually relatively new. I haven't seen these before. Uh, you know, I can click Red Hat. I can click, uh, you know, uh, SUSE. I can click Ubuntu, uh, Windows. I mean, there's a, just a ton of different images. One of the good default images that you can run are the Amazon Linux 2 images. These are Linux images that essentially belong to Amazon that have all the Amazon tools already preloaded. So, you don't really need to install any packages or anything like that. You know, if you're going to use the Amazon management packages or whatnot, you don't really need to do anything. Like you can just pick one of these instances and you're good. So we'll say select. Now on this next screen here, you're going to pick how, what are the resources you want this instance to have? We're going to stick with the, with the, the T2 uh, dot micro, which is the free tier. But again, you can go to the nano, which is smaller than the free tier. It has uh, which is weird uh, that it wouldn't be free. Um, so it has half a, half a gig of memory. Uh, but again, you can see here, you can go with the, the, you know, uh, T2 extra large, which is eight virtual CPUs and 32 gigs of memory. If you, if you need that. So we'll just go ahead and we'll say uh, configure instance. This is where we would select the VPC that we would want to put it in. So if you had an account with multiple VPCs, you would pick what VPC you want to put it in. Um, in our case here, we have a subnet. You'll notice here that the default VPC has given us one subnet in every region of US East. So in every region for Virginia, Northern Virginia, we can put this instance in anything we want. Or we can just say no preference and it will do it for us. Now, auto assign public IP. When we set this to enable, what's going to happen is that this instance will get essentially a default public address so that we can reach it from the outside world, okay? Now, we're not going to talk a lot about other options here. There's a number of different things we're going to talk about later on, like the IAM role is going to be one of them, but we'll visit that a little bit later on. You can, you can enter in commands here if you wanted to. So if, let's say, we're building a web server and we knew exactly what commands we were going to enter once that server is up and running, we could paste those in here and have AWS enter those commands for us on the spin-up of that server so that we weren't necessarily worried with installing all those packages on our own. We'll say add storage. We're going to stick with the default, but again, this is where you could change the size of the storage if you wanted to. You could change the volume type if you wanted to. You could also select to encrypt that image or that, uh, that disk if you wanted to. Sometimes, uh, you know, that is a, a regulatory requirement. 
Adding tags, this is where, again, I want to add name tags. So we're going to say explore demo hyphen EC2. <clears throat> Uh, again, this is just going to be the name. This is not necessarily the host name of this instance that I'm spinning up. It's just a name tag. So if again, if I have something like Cisco Secure Workload that's that's um, importing these tags to be able to create security policies on or uh, create some application mappings, if I have something, some system of record that's ingesting some of these AWS tags, uh, aside from the host name of my, my running server, I would be able to see what the name is that I've registered as. You could also add more. You could say add another tag. We could say, you know, maybe this is a part of an application. So we can say the application is, you know, EC2 demo. That's going to be our application name. So we can add multiple tags. We'll go ahead <clears throat> and say <clears throat> configure the security groups. Now, here is where we configure what kind of access we want for this server. So we're going to say demo security group and we'll give it a description. We'll just make the description the same. Now, what are we going to allow? Well, just because we're playing around here, we're going to allow, um, let's just say HTTP inbound and we're going to say from anywhere. So here's where things can get a little bit complicated if you're not paying attention. This is essentially a, a localized firewall, essentially for this endpoint, right? So what we're saying is that this endpoint is allowed inbound SSH connections and inbound HTTP connections from anywhere. Or I could select custom and I could say only from a specific group, or I could say my IP address, and it's only going to allow that inbound connection from my IP address at that time. So again, if my IP address changes, that's not going to work, right? So we're going to allow these rules despite the warning because this is a demo instance. We don't care. This is where we review what we're going to allow and we say launch. Now, at this point, this is going to ask us for an encryption key. So this is a public and a private key that AWS will create for us and allow us to download it. And this is what's going to give us public access to our EC2 instance or internal access to our EC2 instance. If I have a Windows jump server or a guacamole box um, that allows me to kind of remote desktop or, or SSH into all of my internal servers, um, I would need this key imported into that guacamole server or that jump server. So we're going to create a new key. We're going to just say explore AWS is going to be our, our key. We'll download the key pair. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say launch instance. Uh, AWS will say, awesome, great, thank you very much. We're going to go ahead and launch that instance. We're going to say view instances. And now this instance is spinning up. So if we refresh the screen a few times, you'll start to see that right now there are no alarms. There's going to start to be a status check. And this instance will ultimately be spun up. You can see now that the instance is pending. So this is how you spin up an EC2 instance. Hope you folks enjoyed this video. You can see now that it's running. So this happened just while I was about ready to wrap up. You can see the status check is initializing. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. In turn, up a new instance. We're probably going to use this in our next video when, uh, when dealing with CLI. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.